Hi guys, welcome back to The Shannon Show. So today's video is going to be a celebratory mukbang of me turning to on YouTube and the food is just going to be my cake and me and some bread a day. Now I've already opened everything because the lighting was just so bad and then I realised that I fixed it and I was just like, maybe I should just start the video again. So this is from Lola's Cupcakes. Um, it's like a, a bakery for those of you who don't know it's in London in the UK and it's in a UK bakery and I literally got the cheapest thing this was £15 and I thought it was going to be bigger than this but you know I guess you know Lola, Lola's Cupcakes is not Tesco like £15 will get you a tiny ass cake but I still think it's cute and on the cake it says two years of TSS I wanted to put two years of the Shannon Show on it but obviously it's a tiny ass cake, we couldn't fit everything on it. And it's cookies and cream flavour. The plan is to eat this all in one sitting. I think I can do it. I don't think it's that big of a cake, to be honest. And yeah, so we got some single cream to have with it. We've got some single cream to have with it and we've got some rosé as well. This is my favourite rosé, it's called Pink Moscato. And it reminds me of a rosé that I used to have all the time in Paris that's called Muscador and it's made from the same grapes I was just like maybe this might taste the same and it basically tastes the same so for those of you who like like cocktails and sweeter things rather than wines I'd recommend getting this if you wanted to transition into rosés this is the cheesy card that I wrote myself before I go get my spoon you did it Gail two years on YouTube I'm so proud of your determination and perseverance. I knew you could do it onwards and upwards. You absolute beauty. Aren't I sweet? Positive affirmations only on this channel. Let's get it in. All right. Bad at pancakes. So that's what it looks like on the inside. That's what it looks like. Hopefully you can focus it in. So you can see like the cookies and cream there and then they've got like a little chocolate chunk there and some buttercream and buttercream on the top with a little Oreo cookie. So I'm going to try it dry first. I'm not really sure if I can taste any So it kind of just tastes like a regular sponge.
I'm not sure if it works well with the <coughs> I'm not really sure if it works well with the cream. I feel like creams only really work well with rich cake. This cake's quite soft cake. I think I'm just gonna eat it dry. So, what should we talk about? So, first thing I have to think about is Love Island. Let's talk about it. Now, I feel like this season was definitely like the worst season ever. Well, they're bringing back another winter, they're bringing back another winter love island. Oh, I thought they were going to cancel it. And I kind of feel like they should have. Uh. Even though it didn't get as much views as the summer views, you know, it's still got a decent amount of views. Uh, I can understand why they carried it off. But I kind of feel like it's overkill. But I'd be interested to hear what you think. Well, I feel like what is quite interesting about this season is that nobody has come out yet with a Pretty Little Thing deal, Miss Pat deal, nobody. I'm not even sure if anyone's been named an ambassador yet, which is quite strange. I think by now... People are announcing their brand deals, but it seems like none of them have any. And all of them are just like on TikTok, trying to build their following that way. I would have definitely thought Shauna would have bagged something by now, like a bagged a deal. But what I have noticed is that she's not really that active on her socials, particularly Instagram. Everyone knows that's like where the money is, like influencer wise. If you want to be like an influencer, that's what you do. But she hasn't done that, which I think is quite surprising. But I think maybe it's because she's a bit overwhelmed. Maybe. I mean, she was like a strong, like, contestant. Like, people either loved her or hated her. So maybe she just got overwhelmed when she came out. Because, like, people are crazy and actually take the time out of their day to, to actually, like, send people negative messages. Like, private messages. I feel like talking shit in person, talking shit in, like, your own personal video 
that's fine like because it's not um that's I feel, I feel like that is one thing and you know I feel like you you should be able to talk about people you should be able to have opinions on people but I feel like actually going to the dms and sending them like hateful messages I think that is just very strange behavior and very sad behavior so that's what I'm probably thinking why she's not on social media because she's probably getting trolled a lot But, who is it? Mike and Priscilla are on TikTok. And Shanice and Luke T is on TikTok as well. I almost forgot what letter he was. But even they really haven't been that active on social media. Maybe they've just been like too busy like making deals and stuff like I reckon who will probably get, who will reveal that they have deals. Maybe they're just keeping things under wraps, you know, because Amber, she took a while to reveal her Miss Pat, Miss Pat deal as well because everyone was like, Molly May, Molly May. And then she came out like a month later and was like, ha ha, I got a million dollar deal. So maybe that is what is going to happen. But I feel like do they really have the time to do that because before you know it summer's gonna the summer version's gonna be back and like i'm even starting to forget the people from the last season Maybe I do need a little bit of cream. <laughs> it's starting to get a little bit rich. But yeah, what do you guys think? Do you feel like two love islands in a year is overkill? Or are you here for it? And... Why do you think these the new contestants are not coming out with sponsorships like the other contestants were last year? Let me know what you think. But yeah, Laura's coming back. I think she's like proper got like a proper contract now. I feel like maybe she was like interim presenter for this season, but now she's coming back like officially. Like I feel like I feel like that wasn't really a surprise. I feel like that was like a no-brainer. To bring her back. But yeah, she's gonna she's gonna be back. Now. What other things in pop culture is there to speak about? Oh that the baby rapper person. I'm no longer supporting his music or anything like that. That video was atrocious. Atrocious. The video of him hitting a fan. I think she must have had her phone in her face. She, his face, like the flash on. And that is annoying. I've had the flash in my face. And it has been annoying. It's been irritating. But I never had the urge to now violently assault that person. It was just kind of just like, you know you like not shine that in my face that's that and there's a lot of people saying people saying that she hit him but from the video i don't think it looked like she was just trying to like you know her the celebrities coming past she's trying to like film the video maybe she was getting a bit too close and you know some fans do need to know about personal space but that still doesn't justify him being so violent. And then obviously just like stupid people just saying she shouldn't have done this or she deserved it. I would have done it too. Like you people are crazy. I just feel like 
people just want any excuse to justify hitting people and especially women because when it's the man hitting the woman people are just like oh did people just try and like jump over any hurdle to justify it I think that's what gave him I think that's what that that's what gave him the confidence to make that video basically taking the piss saying I'll pay whoever this much to show me a different angle of the incident that's why he was so bold because people were hyping him up telling him he didn't do anything wrong or they would have done it too and then with his fake ass apology that girl whoever it is they they need to file a lawsuit then to buy a lawsuit a lawsuit but yeah I'm not supporting anything that the baby is doing anymore. That behaviour is unacceptable. The apology was fake. I'm not even sure if he was trying to be serious. But even if he was, or even if there is an official statement. It's very clear that he thinks that that is acceptable behaviour. So I cannot stand that. But yeah. Dare I say, what do you guys think about that whole situation? Do you feel like he was justified in hitting, assaulting that fan? Or do you feel like he was just crazy and just like, you know, the ones where people were just like, they're just looking for a fight. They're just look not even for a fight, but they're just looking for any excuse to hit someone. And that was the, that was his opportunity. That's what my theory is anyway. You can see it. that's how much I've eaten so far. I think I'm going to have another slice and call it a day because I'm starting to feel a bit sick. Like, you know when it's just like the cake is just a bit too sweet and it's a bit too rich as well. I had this cake before but I'm not sure if I had it in a cupcake or as a cake. Maybe it was a cupcake. I think I prefer cupcakes to cakes. I just feel like the icing is just a bit rich for me. Like I usually like a bit more of a lighter icing. And then I guess what's next to talk about? I think the next. Oh, let's just talk about it. this whole coronavirus shit. Yeah, it's actually pissing me off because, like, obviously I'm a journalist. For those of you who don't know, so I have to keep up to date with, like, at least you know, attempt to keep up to date with news alerts. And everything is just coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. People are like stockpiling antibacterial i had a friend and she was like she wanted to go like take pictures because she's like an influencer and she was like 
Because I'm going to take public transport. And I was like, oh, okay. And like, even now, like, I'm just trying not to panic about it. Um, I don't think I will panic about it because I just feel like I lived through swine flu. Like, I didn't have, like, lived through anything else, I don't think. Well, I don't remember anyway. But the last, like, flu virus was swine flu. I didn't get it. And, you know, my life was fine. But I just feel like swine flu, there was, like, fuss about it. But it wasn't to this extent. Like, people weren't, like, self-quarantining, like, whole countries, you know? Like, no, there wasn't, like, no fly zones or anything. And, yeah, it's just crazy. Crazy for something that has a lower mortality rate than the common flu. It is absolutely crazy. And then going out, seeing people in masks. I'm sorry, I laugh. I laugh and I make a face every time I see someone in a mask. And you know what? Especially in a bad mask, like a gappy mask. It's just like, what are you even doing? What are you even doing? Like, I went, I went to Berlin the other week and there was like someone on the plane next to me that was wearing a mask. And it wasn't even like, no, no, it was a, it was a mask. But it was like not a filtered one. It was just like fabric. And it's just like, you know, like the air's just like sinking into the fabric. And then like, you know. Are you going to give me a bite, please? Can I taste something? You can after I finish. I'm going to have one more slice and I'm going to call it a day. This girl has, has been, been quiet for an hour, babes. Don't been, even try No, me. this girl has been begging me and trying to emotionally blackmail me. Don't put this slice. in your video. I don't authorise this. Well, don't get in my video then. You always say that, but then you're starving to get inside my video. I'm not starving to get inside you your video. You are starving. I'm starving for some cake. You're starving, babe. Been emotionally blackmailing me all day. It's not emotional blackmail. Yes, she has. Look been. how big. It, look at the size of the cake. She can't even offer me a slice. Don't put your hand near the thing. She's been harassing me all day for a slice of cake, and I had this vision that I was going to eat all of it, which is not going to come true. And yeah, she's just been being very annoying all day, just for a slice of cake. And let me tell you, she's not going to be impressed when she eats it. <laughs> It's a very basic cake. But yeah, I just think that all of the hysteria is... <laughs> Sorry, I need help because I'm kneeling. I just feel like all of the hysteria is very strange and like i even had one friend say like her mother told her not to order chinese food and when i was in berlin i went to like a chinese place twice and i didn't even think about it but nothing bad happened so just i just feel like we should all just live our lives and i feel like I was like, you know, being like, oh, you know, even if you do get it, you won't die. Like, it's fine. But there are people here who are going to be like more vulnerable to like further complications and death, like people who have like vulnerable immune systems. So uh, that's a, I, I realise now that's just like a bit insensitive to say like, you know, well, I have a strong immune system, so I'm going to be fine. Because people are dying out here. But But yeah, just a reminder for everybody to wash their hands and not just rely on hand sanitizer, which they're actually rationing at supermarkets now because people like stockpiling antibacteria. And you know what? I saw an article about like people like selling antibacteria for like an extortionate amount of prices on eBay because obviously places are selling out antibacterial antibacterial. And I went on eBay and there's really people upselling antibacterial, like listings for like £20, £30, people doing bids for antibacterial. I saw a bid for a half full antibacterial gel and it wasn't even like it was a full antibacterial gel, half full bacterial gel. 
And please tell me why people were actually bidding for it. People, people, I need to get it together. Wash your hands, wash your hands. You do not need to be going out of your way to be bidding for antibacterial from these crooks. And I even saw, I even read one description that actually just made me laugh and it was like, protect yourself, you know, don't fall short. I was just thinking, <laughs> well, you know, you're definitely selling your product. But what do you guys think? Do you feel like, you know, all's fair in, in business? It's a bit immoral for people to be buying antibacterial gel knowing that people, more people want it and upselling it. What do you think? I'm not going to lie, I've got antibacterial in my bag, I might need to put it up on eBay. <laughs> has anyone else, has anyone watching this put their antibacterial up for sale? This is a judgment free zone. Let me know if you have. Um, just like I guess let's just talk about shows so I've got like quite a few reviews coming up so on my blog is obviously releasing very soon um, I've just got so many reviews to do but on my blog is going to be next I wanted to do Elite as well but I'm like stuck on season 1 and like at least with on my blog like I can watch it in the background for stuff like I would watch like a good chunk of it. Um, I managed to get to season one. I managed to watch. I've ma I've watched most of season two, and I watched a big chunk of it as I was cleaning my room because obviously I could watch the screen and like when I wasn't watching the screen I could hear it. But with Elite, obviously it's in Spanish and I I don't know. I just can't do dubs. I can't do dubs. They just sound so bad, and like the most the acting and most of the time the voice acting in the dubs is so bad. So. I just prefer to hear it in the original language and have subs. So yeah, I'm I'm too far behind on Elite to try and catch up because I've just got so many other reviews to do. So I think I might in like a month or so complete season one and do a I finally watched video. But yeah, from what I've watched, I've gotten about halfway through season one. It's pretty decent. I think it's definitely a bit cheesy to begin with. But it's pretty decent, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for all my blog. Um, I'm on like, I'm most of the way down through season two right now as I'm filming this. And yeah, I like it so far. I feel like it's a really good show. It's from the makers of Awkward. I didn't watch Awkward all the way, but I the episodes that I did watch, I liked it. So I'm not surprised that I liked this season as well. Well, this series as well. But yeah, there's quite a few things coming on Netflix this month. I've got that limited series. And I'm interested to see that. But I've got another festival in like it starts next week another festival it's a lgbt festival it's um the bfi's lgbt plus festival or lgbtq plus festival but it's not as intense as regular festivals because regular festivals there's like like four or five films going on a day and it starts off very early in the morning and ends at like 6 p.m but this one it starts relatively early but not too early like 10 p.m and there's only two films a day if any and there's only a maximum of two films a day which i think is i think it's quite good it's quite manageable as well because then you could like you're finished by like say two and then you can use you know the time to write your reviews like three hours
come out lads I can have one more slice of cake then I'm going to call it a night So that's how I'm finishing the cake. I did a pretty decent job to be honest, but I'm just starting to get a bit sick of it to be honest. But yeah, <clears throat> I've got the seafood, seafood boil coming soon. The chicken head in the corner. Um, I think I'm just gonna. I was thinking about making it myself, but I don't know, I'm not confident. The thing is, I can make good prawns, but it's just the lobster I'm a bit mm, about, you know. I think I'm gonna obviously buy it. This like one of the Instagram companies, like I've been like like the side of following off trap trap kitchen London. And that's what I was gonna go. But you know what? Trap Kitchen was like the seafood boy place, like it was the famous seafood Like, they were the standard. They were the one who put, like, seafood boils on the map for the UK. Obviously, seafood boils was famous from, like, the US. In the US is obviously where it originated from, where the people in London got their own. Okay, we're just going to have to make do with one light because the lights keep switching off. were made famous by them but like in London Trap Kitchen that was like the seafood boy place that was the thing that people wanted and that was the thing that people were trekking to South London to get and my sister told me about it and she was like you know her friends were talking about it her friends that live in South London they're always raving about it and then After I've started my YouTube channel, because like one of the main things that I did starting out was like burger reviews and food reviews, I wanted to try the trap kitchen. Like everyone was plugging it. Leonie, An Leonie Anderson, she was plugging it. So I was just like, okay, celebrities are plugging it. Like this shit must be legit. So. I finally go on because you know from time to time I'll go on the Instagram page to check out what, what the page is saying like the prices you know every every day they'll have like a menu and then all of a sudden when I'm like you know when you're just hyping yourself up to go like okay I'm gonna do the trek to South London to go get the, the seafood boil and then they're like okay we're moving to Manchester so obviously I'm now following their journey to Manchester and you know a month goes by they're not back yet two months three months four months five months six months a whole year goes past and they're not back yet and they the thing is they kept saying 
on their London page back soon. And then in Manchester, they fully like, because obviously in London, it was like a collect place. It was like operating out of their home or whatever it was. Um, but in Manchester, they opened up their own store. So I was just thinking, if you've got money to open up a store in Manchester, like, why can't, why can't, you, can, why can't you come back to London? And it was just one big tease. And they're finally back in London now. But I felt like when they moved to London, all the other small kind of cookery places, you know, people who op you know you know those like um restaurants that people operate out of their homes and you know instagram businesses all of them came out of the woodworks they were like okay trap kitchen is gone now the streets that now the streets are ours you know so a lot of seafood boil places have come up in trap london's absence and a lot of them look quite good so I was thinking about going to the Trap Kitchen restaurant that's now open in London, but I just feel like maybe I should give these other seafood places, seafood boil places a chance because they are just slightly a bit cheaper and offer more of a variety. So I'm definitely going to do a seafood boil, whether I attempt to make it or wherever I buy from somewhere. I think I am just going to buy from somewhere. But... Yeah, the main things I want to have in the boil, obviously lobster, I love lobster, honestly, and lobster isn't even that expensive, obviously it's, an, it's, it's more expensive than like say cod or whatever, but it's worth it, if anyone wants like a really good standard inexpensive but you know pushing it a bit lobster i'd say go burger and lobster they do like a pretty good lobster i think if you just want to like try somewhere where you know like standard quality obviously the seafood boil places i've never been to them so it's just going to be like me putting my trust in other people <laughs> but yeah Anyone in London who knows a good seafood boil place that's relatively cheap. My budget is kind of just like, I think my my max budget would be 40. For like one person, 40 would be my maximum budget. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, home straight. Yeah, I think even my lights are telling me to wrap to wrap it up because I should have an ASMR moment. That's it for my mukbang. Hope you enjoyed it. In terms of my verdict on the Lola's cupcake cake, it was a bit underwhelmed. I was a bit under impressed. Um, I feel like it's not dry, but I would prefer it a bit more moist. And I couldn't really taste the cookies and cream. It kind of just tasted like a sponge to me with chocolate buttercream with a chocolate buttercream mix that's kind of what it tasted like um so if i have to rate it i think i'm gonna give this i think i'm gonna give it 2.5 out of 5 but i've had their cupcakes and their cupcakes are great uh, their cupcakes are great so i think maybe that's just a matter of the case i prefer the cupcakes to the cake but let me know what you think do you feel like there's a difference between cakes and cupcakes or do you feel like there 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 isn't but in terms of what you prefer are you team cake or team cupcake i'm definitely team 
cupcake but yes congratulations to me on hitting two years on my youtube on my cha youtube channel reaching two years going at it consistency we love to see it but yeah if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet i think it's about time that you did so hit that subscribe button and if you're already subscribed to my channel don't forget to click that notification bell so you know when the next food type of review is dropping like i said the seafood boil is coming up next but let me know if you have any recommendations for me in the comments of what to eat besides the seafood boil but yes till next time guys bye